Hi, I'm Jeff Snedeker. I'm the horn teacher at Central Washington University in Ellensburg, Washington. This video is to provide you with some tips and hopefully some helpful advice regarding preparing your Washington All-State Horn Audition uh, for honor groups that will be a part of the Washington Music Educator Association's conference in Yakima in February of 2018. Um, this particular video is all about track number three, the excerpt from the slow movement of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's third horn concerto, uh, Kershaw Listing 447. Mozart is an important composer for the horn. He wrote some beautiful music uh, for uh, uh, featuring the horn uh, in the form of several concertos. Um, but he was good at lots of different things. He was uh, particularly known in his day for his operas. Um, very, very good at writing vocal lines uh, and writing singing melodies that uh, found their way out of opera and into any number of different types of instrumental compositions. And that's definitely the case with regard to slow movements, frankly, of any concerto that he wrote but uh, in particular, for our purposes today, uh, horn concertos. This particular uh, concerto is very famous. It's one that is a standard uh, piece of recital literature for high school students, for college students, and for professionals. Um, and this particular movement is one that uh, many people start. As a matter of fact, my very first solo at Solo Ensemble Contest was this particular movement of this particular concerto. So I'm very fond of it. Um, the, uh, there are several things that we want to be concerned about as we prepare this for um, our honor group audition. The first is the typical stuff. We want to be accurate in terms of notes, in terms of rhythms, in terms of articulations, and in terms of dynamics as they are notated. Um, what's interesting, of course, is that as you look at it, there are no dynamics notated at all. Um, this was actually fairly typical during Mozart's day. Performers were encouraged to sort of come up with their own interpretations. However, the uh, orchestral accompaniments uh, generally have dynamics in them to help clue in the, those performers. And so we tend to follow um, those uh, dynamics, or at least use them as a reference. Um, in this particular case, uh, the majority of the dynamics at the start are relatively soft. However, we do need to project above an orchestral accompaniment. So it's not quite, re it's not soft as in really quiet, it's just soft in terms of making a nice sort of tone color. Um, that we don't want to be aggressive with it, we want to be very pleasant uh, sounding uh, through all of this. And um, that definitely holds true in terms of interpreting Mozart in general in these types of things because his slow movements are especially song-like and should be interpreted much like a singer would. Um, and that's definitely going to be one of our goals uh, today. The fact that we have no dynamics uh, notated, however, does not mean that phrasing doesn't matter, that everything is nice and flat. Quite the opposite. Um, if you want to think in terms of phrasing uh, for Mozart, uh, or frankly anybody up until, well, fairly modern times, um, you can just simply follow the melodic contour. As the notes go up, it tends to build in intensity, and as they come down, they tend to relax and perhaps get a little bit quieter. Um, and so we're going to use that as our sort of policy for phrasing uh, as we approach this uh, particular work, since we don't have any other clues to work with. And when we have repeated notes or repeated passages, we're going to use uh, some form of dynamics uh, or shape phrasing to um, help things move forward. So when something is repeated, we're going to think in terms of the possibility of repeating it more quietly as a sort of echo effect or repeating it with a bit more emphasis um, to help the music move along that way. And hopefully when we get to the point where um, I play this, um, you'll notice those differences and then you can make your own decisions as you see fit. Um, a couple things that I want to make sure that I do is, as I'm thinking about phrasing, I always want to think about where my phrases are going to arrive. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about 
uh, the sort of priority of downbeats. Is this downbeat of this measure more important than the downbeat of the next measure, or what? And I use that to sort of create some scaffolding for my phrasing. So I can sort of do this or that, depending on, again, how the, how the contour interacts. The second thing that I want to be especially sure about is I want to make sure that my tone is relatively even. I don't want any swelling on individual notes. I don't want any sort of uh, you know, pretend expressive stuff, whether it's slurred or tongued. I don't want wah, 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 wah. I don't want any of that uh, in this type of music. I want to make it nice and smooth no matter what. And so that's going to be my goal as I follow these phrasing contours to make sure that my sound is nice and even throughout all of that. Um, I also want to uh, make sure that I choose a tempo that makes everything sound easy. And when we look at this, it's marked larghetto. That's our tempo marking. Um, larghetto is something that's very, very slow. Um, however, if you look at the metronome marking, it's actually fairly modest. I mean, it's not really that slow. Um, the reason for that is larghetto, the tempo that Mozart intended or that indicated he indicated, is related to the time signature. And if you look at the time signature, it says cut time, where we would normally feel half notes as the beat. Well, that's the larghetto. The larghetto is the speed of the half notes. That's fairly slow for the half note uh, pulse. And the quarter notes are the subdivision of that. Uh, and of course, the eighth notes are the subdivision of that. So we want to make sure everything lines up nicely. But our, our larghetto tempo is in relation to half note pulses, not quarter notes. Okay? Um, and uh, the last thing I'll say before I play is don't be confused by the editorial changes that have been made to this particular excerpt to make it um, more appropriate for an actual audition. Um, if you're familiar with, and I encourage you to become familiar with, the original version of this, um, you will know that there are sections or phrases that uh, involve only the orchestra, even in this short excerpt, and those have been taken out for the sake of the audition, and, and, and the, the various horn parts have just been pushed together. So it's one continuous thing for the horn and not necessarily accurate to the original. Um, that's why when you do go and listen to this, and I emphasize when, because you should. You should hear many people play this on YouTube or whatever, uh, different recordings, to hear the different ways that they go about this. When you go about that and you begin, you, you begin to notice that, hey, wait a minute, the horn should be playing according to the excerpt, but it's not, that's the reason why. It's been edited with, to push all the horn passages together to make one continuous excerpt for the sake of this audition. Okay, so don't be thrown by that. It's still Mozart, it's still beautiful, it still should be as lyrical and uh, cantabile, song-like, as we can make it. Okay, so uh, let's have a listen, shall we? Um, I'm gonna choose a tempo that's right down the middle, 74 instead of 72 or 76. I'm gonna do that. dum bum bum Dee da dee da dum. Okay, and again, I'm going to try and make it as even as I can. I'm going to make sure that I articulate accurately. Oh, one other thing, you'll notice that we have several different lengths of notes. We have eighth notes, and we have quarter notes, and we have dotted notes, and so forth. Um, it's very important that you show those differences very clearly. And where it's especially noticeable is where we have. Uh, I'll, I, I'll give you an example in measure eight. If you'll find measure eight, you'll notice that we have, on the beat, we have three notes. A B flat on beat one, a D on beat two, and an E flat on beat three, and then a rest. Um, the first two notes that we play are eighth note, eighth rest, and the last note is a quarter note. And we want to show the people listening to us that we know the difference. So we're going to make sure that we play eighth note, rest, eighth note, rest, quarter, full, like that, okay? That wasn't a very good demonstration, but hopefully you'll hear the difference and you'll be listening for it when I play right now, okay? So I'll be trying to make those differences throughout. All right, here we go. Let's check that tempo one more time. Okay, that's the quarter note. Thank you. 
this excerpt. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Good luck on, on your auditions. And if you have any questions about the horn or this excerpt or anything else, please feel free to contact me at the email address or at the phone number that is about to magically appear at the bottom of the screen. Take care, and like I said, good luck on your auditions.